before I start with the training, let me tell you what basically selenium is and how it evolved over a period of time. Right? Selenium is basically a browser automation tool. It can automate your browser, it can automate your website. If you think that if you want to automate your desktop based application, for example, any desktop based, for example, there's some game, you cannot do that with Selenium. Okay, Selenium is primarily meant for browser for website right it's an open source tool os open source tool fine and this is how it evolved over a period of time that is like earlier there used to be right now also it is said like there were three components in the beginning in somewhere around 2007 when i looked at this tool for the first time there were three components one was known as ide one was known as RC and one is known as grid. Fine. So these are the key components of the tool. Okay. And IDE was the simplest, or rather, it is the simplest one. It is still there. Fine. The only thing is, it is a record and run tool. Right. If you are new to automation and if you don't know what record and run is, it is a very basic thing that it's a tool in which you can capture your action, right? Whatever actions you do on a browser, that tool records all those actions, fine. And after that, it replicates those actions, fine. I think most of you would be knowing what record and run is. All the automation tools have this record and run feature, okay? Now, ID is primarily a record and run tool which only works on Mozilla. This is also one of the drawbacks that this tool only works on Mozilla browser. And you have no reports generated in this tool, Selenium IDE. Fine. If you have got, say, a very small project having 5 to 10 test cases, you can do it in IDE. But if you have a large scale project wherein the number of test cases are more than, say, 100 or 1000 or 5000, fine. Then it doesn't make sense to use IDE. You should, you should, uh, you should never use that. Fine. So IDE is basically a primary record and run tool. Okay. And record and run is also not successful these days. Right. The reason being that uh, suppose you are on a website like uh, bbc.com, right? Where in the complete website changes every day. BBC is a news website, right? The news will change every day. Okay. You just cannot record and run everything. The complete website changes every day. So the websites are dynamic these days. Record and run should not be performed. Okay. So that's why they had a tool known as RC. Now RC was quite dynamic. It could test dynamic websites and all. Okay. But the only problem was that testers had to learn a programming language like Java or Ruby or C sharp, fine, or Python. A PHP, it was available in many languages. Right? It's not necessary that if your website is made in Java, then you have to use Selenium with Java, or if your website is made in C sharp, you have to use Selenium with C sharp. It is not like that. You can use Selenium with any language. Right? And RC generated good reports and all, everything was there with this. Okay. The only thing is tester had to learn a programming language, fine. And RC can work on different browsers as well, like i, Firefox, Chrome, and all, fine. And grid, grid is used for the parallel running of the test cases, okay. In grid, we have a central node. We connect the machines to that central node, okay, and we execute the test cases by distributing the test cases in different machines and control them in, in a central machine. All right. This actually what it does, it saves our time. If you've got huge number of test cases, you can run the test cases parallelly using these. All right. So this was how Selenium came into being in the very beginning. Fine. Now, over a period of time, what was realized was that there were few drawbacks in RC. People primarily started using RC. This is the main tool. IDE you should prevent from using. Okay, it's not a very sophisticated tool. Okay, 
so what happened was rc had drawback okay so people came up with a new tool known as selenium web driver or it is also known as selenium 2.0 okay now don't think that it's an upgradation from rc to web driver no it's not like that web driver is altogether a new tool okay it's a completely new tool with completely new set of features people who have worked with rc when they look at the web driver code they are not even able to understand it you don't need to learn rc in order to learn web driver you can directly learn web driver and web driver is the latest thing and it is the most uh, like the most and the, the tool which is most in demand right now okay again it could test dynamic websites it could you can use any one programming language and it Reports open multiple browsers, but apart from that, there were various drawbacks. I don't want to go into those drawbacks right now because you will not be able to understand, right? There were some commands in RC which used to be very tough to do, right? In web driver, it's very easy. Okay, and IDE is still there. It's improved. Okay, versions have changed over a period of time, and with web driver, we came up with Grid Two. Grid two supported RC as well as web driver. All right. So this is how this tool has has been um, progressing over a period of time. Right. Are you guys not able to hear me very clearly? Are you guys right? So this is a brief history of Selenium. So anybody having any question? Regarding Selenium, regarding the course, today is the first day, so I just want to clear out your doubts. Then the people ask a lot of questions on the first day. Anything? <clears throat> right. So let's do one thing. Let's start off. Right. In this training, we will be studying Selenium with Java. Okay, now Java is the primary language, okay. right? In which Selenium is implemented. Okay, okay. Uh, most of the people in industry use Java. Okay, Java is the most famous language with which Selenium is used. Okay. All right. The reason is being is that Java is open source. Okay, Java is a free language and Java is open source language, right? So you don't, you don't have to pay anyone to use Java, and Java is platform independent. Platform independent means that if you make the code in say Windows machine, you can deploy that code on Unix based machine as well. Fine. So that's what platform independent means. Okay. So we will be studying Selenium with Java language, and we'll be starting off with Java first. So as we proceed with the course, we'll be going from simple things to complex things. So please bear with me. Okay. I hope my voice is clear now, and you are able to hear me. Okay. I hope my voice is clear. All right. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. So I had a cell phone lying near to my PC. Maybe that's why. Okay. Now the first thing which you need to do is that when you're learning Java, you need to install Java. I think everybody has installed Java on their machine. Fine. If you have a 64-bit machine, which most of us have these days, okay, please install JDK as well. JDK is Java Development Kit. Fine. Go to Google and type download JDK. All right. We'll go to the first link over here and go to this first link. If you're having a 64-bit machine, please install JDK as well. You click on this link and you'll come to this page over here. This is the JDK for Windows 64-bit machine. You download this after accepting the license agreement. Fine. Okay. Now after that, you have to install Eclipse in your machine. Download and use Eclipse in your machine. Eclipse is the editor for Java language. Right, most of you would be knowing these things which I'm teaching. Okay, but I want to start from the basics because all type of people just they join the training. Fine. 
so over here just go to google and type download eclipse eclipse is the editor for java language fine and uh, just like turbo c used to be there for c language okay every language has got its editor in which you can write the code so eclipse is the editor for java language you can download any one download the eclipse standard version or java ide for java e eclipse ide for java e e developer depending on your machine whether it's 32 bit machine 64 bit machine you can simply download okay so manu prakash i don't think so you are in audio conference you are not in audio conference all right so this is how eclipse works fine you need to download it and after you download it you will get eclipse in like i have in my machine over here on the desktop i have put it hold on do by my okay like you will you will get a zip file when you extract the zip file you will get eclipse over here like this you get a folder inside that folder you will have eclipse.exe file you don't need to install eclipse it comes as a bundle fine you just need to directly start it and eclipse will start inside eclipse we will be writing all the code and all everything the path over here which it asks is actually the path of the project that means the place it's known as the workspace technically fine in this path you will be keeping all your projects and all whatever you make fine so i'll make a new path over here july weekday 2014 okay and let eclipse start so at this path i'll be storing all the code fine just hold on let it open meanwhile if anybody has got any questions regarding any topic please let me know mansa i am not sure because people are able to hear me clearly right so this is eclipse it's just started okay and another question being asked is how many days uh, am i going to do to java look in the online training i don't do like this that i teach java and then i teach Uh, selenium okay it's not like that i go parallelly i teach you the concepts of java language and then i teach you selenium parallelly okay the thing is most of the people find this tool and they are not able to understand this tool is because they don't have a good grasp on java language okay by telling you that they don't have a good grasp on java language i mean they don't have a good fundamentals in the area of object oriented programming Right. learning java is nothing but learning object oriented programming java is object oriented language now people don't know the concepts of object oriented programming and they are not able to learn selenium the reason being the architecture of selenium is completely object oriented if you go to the official uh, official website of selenium which is seleniumhq.org and if you look at the download link over here then right, out here you know they have given a very good documentation of selenium it is in form of this java doc link fine and if you click on this java doc link you get this particular documentation of selenium now this documentation is actually a little technical fine it's more towards more inclined towards the concepts of object oriented programming so that's what we are going to do first let us study the concept of object oriented programming and then we will come over to selenium don't direct i'll not directly jump over to selenium all right fine so this is the welcome screen in eclipse fine you close the screen and you will get a page like this okay in this page this is the central portion in which you will write the code fine this portion white portion on the left side is technically known as project explorer okay and at the bottom you will be getting the output in the console 
points. So these are the three areas, right? These are the three areas in Eclipse. Okay, right. Now I'll create a new project in Eclipse. To create a new project, you can right click over here in white space, go to new project. Okay, and under general or under Java, sorry, select Java project. Okay, and click on next, and I'll name the project as day one. It is the first day. Hold on, let the project be created. Fine. So this is the project which we have created. On the left hand side, it will be visible to you. If you expand it, it will have a source folder and GRE system library. Source folder is the folder in which we write the Java code, and GRE system library is actually Java which is installed on the system. Fine. Now, if you right click on the project, you will get a lot of options. Hold on. Yeah, you'll get a lot of options. We will be using them as well. For example, the last option is properties. Okay. If you go here, you have all these things present with you. You you have the project path. That is the project is lying under this path. This is the workspace path which we had given in the beginning. Right. The project is lying under the workspace. When I started Eclipse, I had given a path, right? So this was that path, and under that day one is there. Right. If you open this path on the hard drive, you will be able to see the folder. Out of all these folders, only you can relate the source folder. This source folder you can you can see over here. Okay, this is the most important folder. Inside this, you keep all the Java code and whatever Selenium code you are making. You are going to keep everything over here. Right now, inside the source folder, I'll create a new class. Fine, and I'll just call the class as sample dot Java. All right. Uh, the font is very small. I'll just increase the font size so that you are able to look at it very clearly. Fine. I hope you are able to see this clearly. Fine. So over here in sample dot Java, the following code is automatically created. Public class sample. Now please note. The first line denotes the name of the class. That is, the class starts with a curly braces opening and closing bracket. Whatever code you will write, you will write in this class. And the name of the class has to be same as the name of the Java file. Please note this; it is mandatory in Java. Okay. Now I am assuming that in this class you know the basics. Okay, you know what integers are. What strings are right? You know what basic functions are. All right. So I'm assuming that you have a basic idea of programming. Find what int is, what string is, what functions are. If you don't know that, if you are not comfortable at all with programming language, then you know what? Don't join this training directly. Okay. Go for the video tutorials first. Go to my website. Go to Selenium tutorial link. These are the video tutorials which I have kept. Go for the video tutorials and then later on join the class by playing the remaining things. If you have never done programming in your life, right? So don't join the class directly in that case. Okay. So now in Java, the control comes inside the main function. Like in C language also, right? There is a main function that control directly comes up when you execute the program. Similarly, in Java, when you execute the program, the control comes in the main function, and you can print over here system dot out dot print and then inside main function. System dot out dot print and then is the command to print something in Java. The shortcut is S Y S O, and you hit control space bar. Okay. So the, this is the command system dot out dot print ln to print something in Java language, and you can execute the program. You can execute the program in two ways. 
you can right click on this file select the option run as java application okay it will execute and it, at the bottom it will print in console that this is output or you see this green icon on the top known as run you can click on this as well and whichever java file is open it will be executed okay fine now one more thing guys a very small thing with which people come to me at times they get confused sometimes what happens is that by mistake you close this package explorer you see the on the left hand panel package explorer by mistake you close this and then you don't know how to come back to that window and people reach me with this problem fine you can come back you see the small icon over here show view as fast view a small icon at the bottom this one okay you click on that you will get all the windows and all which you can open out of that you want to see package explorer okay you click on that and this will come back right click undo the fast view and you will see the code will come up or at times you close the console you see the console in which the output comes up at the bottom fine and then you get confused at how to go back to console you can bring the console back again from the same icon you select console and console will come up you can drag the console at the bottom okay so it's not uh, that you want to close it it will never come you just have to you, you can get the the console or the package explorer from here all right fine now this is the simple command system dot out dot print ln to print something in java right similar to other programming languages it has got integers int i then string x equals to i can type hello right so all these data types are there float in float i can store decimal numbers fine okay now the important thing is that if you go to the physical location where this project is lying i had opened this location right inside the source folder you will be able to see sample.java file if you open it it will have the same code which you had written in eclipse fine and corresponding to this class inside the bin folder bin folder is not visible inside eclipse fine bin folder is not there in eclipse inside the bin folder you will see sample.class this in java every java file is converted to a class file okay every java file is converted to a class file this class file is like an executable file you can execute it if you have to deliver the client the code you actually deliver this some class file sometimes you see developers say that we are doing the deployment what do they do they deploy this class file on the server the java file is not deployed the class file is like an exe file you will not be able to understand if you open it fine but this is actually the main file which can be executed stand alone if i give it to you on your machine you can also execute it fine how to execute it that's a different thing okay uh ketan is asking question string is not appearing in a different color like int because string is a inbuilt class and int and float are data types okay you will come to know as we proceed okay this is a inbuilt class moreover you might get confused what static is over here i will talk about static as well as i proceed with the concept of object oriented programming at times people they get confused between where to use static and where not to use static so i will talk about that as well okay so right now i was telling you that the class the java file which i had made and the java file which was present in the source folder correspondingly the class file was present in the bin folder okay in eclipse you can give the direction where to store the class file hold on if i make another file another class known as as dot java fine and inside it i just type system dot out dot print ln learning selenium fine if i run this 
you will see that it will print learning selenium at the bottom okay and inside the bin folder you will have the class file corresponding to the java file as well s dot class is automatically generated the java file would be there in the source folder okay and in the bin folder you will see the class file coming up now when you have to deliver the client the code you deliver these class files okay and when you have got say you have got lot of class files in your project and you have to deliver or deploy all the class files to the client or you have you want to deploy all these class files on the server fine so what you do is that you bundle all these class files together into a single file known as the jar file many of you might have heard the word jar okay jar file is nothing but collection of all these executable class files and you it's something like zipping them in a layman's term something like zipping them a jar file is a, a single file which is collection of many files and you simply put all the class files in a jar file and give it to the client for example when you install java in your machine in your project you see this gre system library okay if you expand this you will see a lot of jar files this gre system library is nothing but java which was installed on your machine okay inside it you will see lot of jar files these jar files came up when you installed java and inside this jar files the complete java api is there okay complete java is there inside this inside these jar files for example if i type system dot out dot print ln new date right and you just import the date class what is this new date and all forget about this right now okay but date is a internal class present somewhere in the jar files okay if i just write this and run this it will print the current date and time along with day and all everything day month year time time zone is isc fine so i have used this internal class this internal class date dot java was created by java guys okay this is the date class fine it's an inbuilt class right and i have just created that technically this is known as creating the object of the class right forget about this what new is i talk about that later on but what i am trying to tell you is that you can use the internal classes of java those classes are present in these jar files for example if i expand rp.jar you will see these class files if you expand anything else there are many such class files many such inbuilt class files which you have to use or which you can use in java language fine okay and where is this class these classes are inside the jar file of java language fine similarly whosoever made selenium okay, it was made by thoughtworks this company known as thoughtworks okay provided us the jar file okay we need to download the those jar file and import them in the project okay and use the existing classes from those jars to work with selenium to actually work with selenium that is selenium. those classes are selenium classes fine so right now i just have got java jar files in my project these java jar files have got java classes in them fine if you go to seleniumhq.org okay after going to seleniumhq.org click on the download link over here on the top and you will see that there are the very these are the various client version in java you will have the download link you download this okay and you will have the jar files coming up in my machine i have kept hold on this one here Okay, the top five. Just a minute. Yeah, in my machine, I have kept them over here in this folder. Selenium two dot three five. Okay, when you get them, you extract the folder and you will get a get a folder like this. Okay, 
these will be the two jar files selenium java 2.3 2 dot x dot jar right now it is 2 dot pole 2 version fine and under the library folder you will have all the other jar files as well fine so don't forget that under the library folder also there are lot of jar files these all are selenium jar files okay the main one is this selenium java 2 dot x dot jar okay now when you import these jar files into your project your project will become selenium enabled okay there is no exe file for selenium don't think that there will be some exe file like qpp you double click on that exe and it will start installing it's not like that okay so you need to go to your project day one right click on it go to the properties of the project you need, i am importing the jar files into eclipse okay go to the properties of the jar file and sorry property of the project and you will see the option java build path over here you see this java build path option over here in this there will be four tabs go to the libraries tab fine and click on add external jars click on the button add external jars and you can add the jar file add this one don't add sources or jar this is actually the ignore that i'll tell you later on what sources or jar is add this jar and again click on add to add external jar and add the jar inside the library folder don't forget to add the jar inside library you will have all these jars added click on okay and automatically a folder or a library known as reference libraries will be generated inside eclipse and under that you will have the selenium jar file now you can start using selenium okay sometimes people don't get reference libraries actually you have to be inside java perspective in eclipse look eclipse is a tool used by the developers it can do lot of things we are here to use eclipse only for selenium okay and in eclipse you will see an icon on the top all right this icon which i have just highlighted you click on this icon and go to other these are the various perspectives in which the developers work in selenium we only need to work under java perspective okay so make sure that you are in java perspective you will see the reference libraries for selenium now to work with these reference libraries okay what they do how do how do they do you need to understand the concept of object oriented programming i told you how to configure selenium in your project this was my day one project i have configured selenium but how to use selenium how to open a browser navigate to a site uh, check whether something is present or not you need to actually know the object oriented programming in java language so that's what we are going to do next learn the concepts of object oriented programming but before that anybody having any question regarding the training regarding the course anything any question from anyone okay there is a question being asked look whenever you ask a question to webex chat please make sure you direct it to everyone fine make sure you are directing it to everyone and not sending me privately so that everyone can see the question okay why we need the reference libraries is one of the questions being asked look reference libraries obviously when we need when we need selenium we will need reference libraries under reference libraries automatically selenium jar will be added okay fine another question being asked is what is the framework why is it so famous okay so uh yaar rupa the classes for one hour every day yes Olga is asking a question. If I complete the training and later on, if I want to re-attend it, will I have to 
full price. No, Bonda, if you want to re-attend the training, I don't take any fee for that. But generally, if the if any seat is there in the batch, I will definitely take. <laughs> Maximum, sorry, maximum 25 people are allowed in one batch. Obviously, not every time 25 people come, but still, if somehow in the batch 25 people are already there, then I'll not be able to take you in the next batch. But if the seats are there, then I'll take you. Okay. Now, uh, another question which was asked was, what is a framework? Okay, this is a tough question to explain what framework is. Please keep yourself on mute. Don't unmute yourself. If you want to talk, you can unmute yourself on that. Right. So, uh, look, Pramila, I'll just answer your question. What is a framework? Okay. Look, when you write your, when you do a project, okay, suppose you are required to automate some test cases in Sunday. Okay, these are your test cases. Fine, say test case one, test case two, test case three, test case four. Fine. So when you run them, you want to run them in a certain order. Okay. Apart from that, you need that certain reports should be generated when the test case run. You want that from HTML reports. Or XLS reports, or <coughs> sorry, XML reports should be generated. Apart from that, you need that the data for the test cases should be read from XML or XLS files. You want you want to keep your test data separately, and you want to want that inside these test cases, the data should go from some files, right? And you want to store some screenshots of the errors somewhere. Fine. You want to store the logs. Logs means that server logs are also there, right, which tell you what is happening at every moment. So similarly, when our script run, the Selenium scripts, when they will run, you want to generate some logs which will tell you what was happening when the script was running. So to collaborate between all of these, we use a centralized tool. These tools are known as like the J unit tool is there, test ng tool is there. These days BDD is also there, BDD tools like JBehave. Cucumber is there. Fine. So what these tools do, they take the data from here. Fine. They take the data from the Excel file. They call the test case, corresponding test case. They get the results, reports. They store the results in the HTML format. They store the logs, screenshot. So this is a central entity. This controls everything. And this complete thing, okay, this complete thing in as a whole is known as a framework. Okay, there are various strategies to design a framework. All right, so we will do that. Fine. Right? Selenium as a tool is only used in this part in the blue box to implement the test cases. So it's not just Selenium which you have to learn. There are various other things as well which are in, involved. All right. So this is a general overview of what a framework is. Fine. Another question. Uh, why why only we use Eclipse? Why don't we use any other tool? Okay. Well, Eclipse is the most simplest one. There is no special tool for Selenium. Selenium is an open source tool. We use only Eclipse for this. There are other tools like NetBeans and all which you can use, but primarily people use Eclipse. Okay. Shilpa, download 2.42, which is the latest one you can download. Okay. Uh, where will I be able to find your recorded session? So that I will be emailing you the recorded session. I will be emailing you the recorded session. Okay. Yes, by creating reference libraries by importing the jars, I am creating a Selenium platform in my project. I am making my project Selenium enabled. All right, Nadi? Yeah. Fine. So, another question I think on. Okay.
little bit intro for multi threading multi threading you don't actually need for selenium rupa why do you need intro for multi threading you don't need multi threading for selenium you don't need to use multi threading multi threading means executing two tasks parallelly okay you don't need to do that if you want to execute two test cases parallelly then there is a special tool known as selenium bridge which you can use okay why is selenium so popular very good question um look i started working in automation long time back and initially there was a tool uh qtp the test director and all whatever it is right so qtp is a paid tool used to automate web and desktop based application fine okay now the drawback is it only works on windows and it's a paid tool as well no selenium came into existence long time back but it was not so famous but in un until 2011 in 2011 selenium web driver was released it was far more better than the older version which was rc it could work on multiple operating systems multiple browsers right and it was free only thing is it is only for web based applications so selenium can do everything this qtp can do and it's a free tool moreover it is supporting multiple browsers and multiple operating system right so that's why it became famous that's why do we need testing background or we need to you need to some extend if you don't have a testing background you can let me know i'll give you some tutorials on manual testing that is not a problem okay so this is why selenium is famous primarily it's a free tool one qtp license is very expensive 5000 dollars or something so it's very expensive so please companies prefer to use web driver than you the driver what is the need of reference library of selenium look this is the what when you download qtp selenium is a tool you need to download it right under reference libraries you have the selenium tool these are the jar files for selenium tool in tomorrow's class you will understand what is the meaning of these jar files how are they important okay these jar files are nothing but these are these jar files you can say these this is selenium okay i can rename this reference library to selenium right inside this reference library the jar files of selenium are there okay java native classes are not more than enough to automate you know okay how much java should i learn for selenium it you should learn core java in the recorded videos also i have taken up core java fine and you should have a pretty good programming hand to learn java yes to do, to do selenium i won't say i won't say that no no you don't need any programming you need to have programming language knowledge but it is not so tough look if you think that it is going to it's going to come to you in just one week or two weeks it's not going to happen right you need to practice it's not a tough thing to do everything is ready the complete course is ready for you the only thing which you need to do is practice and that's where people fail if you are not practicing every day then you are not learning fine uh, can we connect it to quality center yes we can connect it to test management tool we can connect this tool but for that again it's not so simple people connect it to jira and all lot of other tools as well okay right any other question right so you don't have to run away from programming if you think that um uh, you programming is stuff and all it is not tough look the thing is at what i'll not be covering that sergeen but i'll be actually making tutorials on that i'm making making tutorials these days how to connect it to quality center you'll get it in the pre recorded video because not everybody wants it. okay 
look the thing is uh, you have to learn programming language the advantage of this tool is that if you learn programming you learn java and if you learn java learning other tools like jmeter or soap ui which does web service testing it becomes easy okay this is the advantage of learning this tool that learning other tools also the process becomes quite easy all right so fine then we we'll meet tomorrow people who are registered for the course i hope everybody has got the username and password right around eight people have registered so far for the weekday batch fine so i hope everybody all eight of you have got the username and password for the video if you want to register for the course you can contact me through the contact trainer link on the website on the top right side you will see a contact trainer link you can contact me through the link and in the message you can say that you want to join the course and i'll be back to you okay so we'll have again a meeting tomorrow i will be emailing you the new link you will be getting a new link for the meeting and please note we will be studying about the concept of object oriented programming tomorrow okay fine all right thank you